Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I am here with an advanced UV unwrapping tutorial. I got many requests about detailed UV unwrapping tutorials, so here it is. I tried to show and explain everything I know about UV unwrapping in Cinema 4D. I believe after watching this an hour long tutorial, even if you are a beginner, you will start to figure out how UV unwrapping works in Cinema 4D. I tried to put as many challenging shapes into these guns so we can explore unwrapping them. I will start off with the easiest methods, then I will dive deep into manual UV unwrapping. Before getting into the tutorial, I should point out that this tutorial will be about hot surface, subdivision surface modeling workflow. Of course, you can apply these techniques to other workflows as well. Also, if you drop a like, I would really appreciate it. I mean, it really helps the channel. So, without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. Before jumping into UV unwrapping, I should mention one important subject. This is especially important in subdivision surface workflow, and it is about UV distortion. Before getting into that, let me create a UV checker material so that I can show you what I am talking about. So let's create a new material and select that UV checker texture. By the way, I'm going to put that texture in the description so you can get it as well and you can follow me along. We don't need any reflectance, then I'm going to set my texture period size to 1K. As you can see, my scene is quite raw. I just finished modeling. I didn't even rename my objects yet so that we can start from scratch. So I was talking about UV distortion in subdivision surface workflow. I have a generator over here, the subdivision surface generator. If I turn this off and if I hit NNB, we are gonna start to see the actual geometry of my objects. And this UV distortion usually happens on uh, relatively low poly objects, such as uh, this one, for example. Let's assign that material, the bool, and let's change its projection to weak. And if I hit Q, or you can enable and disable the generator by clicking on this icon, we are going to start to see some distortions, especially on the sharp edges of the seams. For example, check out over here. If I enable this, I will get a different texture, a different material look. But if I turn this off, I will get something completely different. The density is very low, and when I hit, uh, when I enable subdivision surface, the UVs are trying to catch up with the new edges, but usually it cannot do that. This is happening because we don't have enough geometry to support these sharp edges. If I turn this off and start to add new supporting edges, for example, I'm gonna add this one over here and immediately you're gonna see some changes on the surface. If I hit Q and enable subdivision surface, we are not gonna get that distortion anymore. So this is the basic idea. Uh, we can do the same process on, on the other areas that we have distortion. For example, over here, if I get this one in and enable southern surface, we are going to get less distortion. So as I said, this is going to happen on low poly objects, but for example, on this object, I don't think we are going to get the same problem. So let's assign this material on that object. I'm going to change its projection to cubic and enable subdivision surface. And as you can see, we are getting nearly no distortion. This is happening because the topology of this object is quite uniform. Like the sizes of these polygons are very close to each other, but there is no polygons that may cause this distortion. But on the other hand, on this object, as you can see, these polygons look pretty different. 
we can't talk much about uniformity in this object. So having a uniform uh, topology is really important if you want to texture your objects, especially in Substance Painter, you may get quite different results than what you see in Substance Painter. For example, if I happen to export this object as it is right now, and if I want to texture this on in Substance Painter, and when I am done in Substance Painter and get this object back and uh, put this newly textured object under the subdivision surface, subdivision surface, and if I enable the subdivision surface, I will get something completely different than what I saw in Substance Painter, especially on these sharp edges. I think this is a really important subject you should always uh, be careful about because all your artwork will be for nothing. So be careful about these kind of objects. Always check your distortions, especially if you are working in subdivision surface workflow. This generator is not only subdividing your mesh, but uh, always remember it is also subdividing your UVs as well. So I hope this is clear. In short, try to try not to export low poly objects to Substance Painter. So what can we do about uh, this subject? Well, it is quite easy. I will add new geometry to my mesh to make it as uniform as possible. To do that, I will literally subdivide my object. So let's select this object. I'm gonna hit tree uh, or you can go into polygon mode, right click and we can click on subdivide tool. I'm gonna turn on zoom to subdivision and it okay perfect now we have a bunch of new edges and the topology looks obviously more uniform now i'm gonna test it if we are getting distortion or not and as you can see i see nearly no distortion at all just a little bit over here but this is happening because of the random seams from the cubic projection but overall this is looking great after that point uh, we don't have to worry about uv distortions and let's check out the top section and everything is looking great over here then as you can see i can follow the same process on this object because this is not looking very promising i mean we have some huge polygons, some um, small, etc. So I think our best option is to soft white this one as well, just like I did for this object. So it is really easy, just right click and soft white your mesh. I know this is creating a unnecessary amount of edges and polygons. But since we are working in South Division Surface Workflow, I don't think it's going to be a problem because, you know, this is not a game engine. But if you still have some problems with the density of the objects, you can grab loop selection tool, for example, and try to get rid of as many edges as possible, if we have time, of course. But I don't think we are going to need that. So. I'm going to just leave these materials and assign this material on that null so that it's going to affect every object under the null. I'm, I'm going to change its projection to cubic. And I'm going to enable and disable subdivision surface to see if we have, we are getting any distortion or not. Okay. I think everything is looking great. Now, in the next part, I will talk about automatic projections. Okay, now let's talk about how we can get decent UVs in a very fast way. I actually just showed you that by applying this material. I'm gonna assign this back to the null and I'm gonna change this material's projection to cubic. I believe the cubic is the most convenient one along with the flat. Now let's check the 
mesh and as you can see everything is looking great i know we are getting some random seams but overall this is looking great also remember that you can uh, increase the quality by playing around with with the notes such as tri planner etc but this is looking great as it is right now uh, i believe i use this technique 90 percent of the time but remember that i am working alone and i usually stay in cinema 4d but there is a big but if you are working in a studio if you are working in a pipeline and if you are working with other people you should stay away from this technique i mean this is not very professional way to be in a pipeline so in short if you are alone and if you are in a single software this technique is going to be great to get fast results but if you are in a studio in a pipeline just unwrap your objects now let's talk about automatic uv unwrapping tools i'm gonna switch to uv edit and first thing first let's go to this material and change its projection to uv unwrapping so that the projection will be based on the real uvs of the objects let's start off with this one for example i'm going to select this and solo it right off the bat we need to reset these uvs because these are looking like a mess i'm going to select them all Control a and i'm going to click on reset uv now let's go over here we have the older tools and the newer tools the newer obviously works much better so i'm gonna select the packed one and click on apply as you can see that it's an amazing job by the way let me scale this material down to let's say 25 percent so we can see much better what's going on so as i said that tool made an amazing job we just need to align some of these islands for example i can click on that polygon so that i can see which polygon islands i should select then i'm going to double click on this one i'm going to hit r and rotate this after rotating i'm going to hold down shift to snap it and i'm going to stop right over here and this is looking absolutely great for an automatic tool we can follow the same process on these polygon islands then we have this one uh, most of the time these automatic tools won't give you the perfect results so you need to work on them just a little bit for example we need to cut these edges off i'm going to hold down shift to select these edges then i will go into polygon mode because i need to select these polygon islands then i will go back to edge mode then open up uv unwrap options i'm going to enable restrict the polygon selection so it's going to only unwrap the selected islands then i'm going to turn off also realign and hit okay and that's gonna be it then we can try to rotate this around to get a better alignment then to make it better i can select a straight edge and click on align uv islands same here double click on the islands and rotate this around then select straight edge and click on align uv islands and that's gonna be it after aligning them you can select them all go to uv packing and select geometric one make sure to select these options preserve orientation and equalize island size because you know we just rotated this to align them also the equalize island size will try to scale these islands based on their real sizes so that the texture density will be the same all over the surface so let's click on apply and this is looking great you can also scale this down more to let's say 10 percent and you can see the texture density it is the same all over the place all over the polygons so that tool is working great but only in this kind of hard surface cubic and angular shapes so let's turn off solo mode and this time let's select that object by the way we cannot select anything because this object doesn't have any uv double tag so in order to get that i'm going to right click on my object go to material tags and select 
set UEW from projection. Now, if I'm going to find polygon mode, I will have access to these options. Right off the bat, I'm going to reset these UVs and click on apply. And this is the result. To see the seams, I'm going to go into edge mode and check the mesh. These white lines are our seams and they are all over the place. These are not looking very good. These look like kind of they are randomly assigned. So this is not going to work at all. Let's try the other one, the cubic one. Okay, this is looking a little bit better, but if I'm going to edge mode, you are going to see that these seams are not looking that good. So we can skip this method as well. Now let's try the angle one. And this is looking worse. We can also try the older ones, like the cubic one or the box one, for example. This is going to look a little bit better, but if we look at seams closely, we are going to have the same problem. These are not looking very well. They are not very straight. So in this case, we need to unwrap this part by hand manually by selecting seams with the loop selections, etc. So as you can see, these automatic UV unwrapping tools have some kind of restrictions. They will not work all the time. They usually work great on this kind of a hard surface shapes, but whenever it comes to this kind of uh, curved rounder shapes, it doesn't work that well. Also, we have lots of polygons. This is one of the reasons that we are getting this kind of random seams. Speaking of manual UV unwrapping, now let's dive deep into real UV unwrapping. So Basically, you can try to imagine the process as if you are trying to unwrap a paper cup. And this is going to be exactly the same thing we are going to try to do. We are going to try to convert these 3D shapes into 2D shapes. To do that, just like the paper cup, we need to cut our objects into pieces. And we are going to do that based on seams. Let me click off, select all the polygons and reset the UVs. And I'm going to go into edge mode and my go to tool for selections is loop selection tool. It is under the selection, loop selection, or you can use the shortcut UNL. And this is going to be my first loop because this edge is looking like the sharpest one. Then I'm going to hold down shift, select the other seam, this one. Check the other edges as well. And these are looking great. Also, let's select this object. Then I will try to select other seams based on their angles. In that case, I'm going to check the shape from different angles. And it looks like this is looking a good loop for a seam. Then let me check it. Yes, this one is looking like the sharpest one. Then I will be doing the same on these edges as well. Hold on Shift and select these edges. All right, then we are gonna need extra loops. For example, on the top, I'm gonna open shift and select that loop. Then, um, I don't think we are gonna need any more. After selecting these, I'm gonna open up UV unwrap options and again, re-enable auto realign and click on, okay. I'm going to select them all because we need to pack them. Go to UV Packing. You can select the geometric one and click on Apply. Now let's check this one by one. I'm going to click on that UV Island and move it over here. And obviously, we have great amount of distortion on these polygons. It means that we need to select a seam as well. So you can either select this in the 3D view or you can use the 2D view. I'm gonna just double click on that edge loop. Then 
make sure you selected these islands. Then I will go back to edge mode, open up the VM wrap option, and everything is looking great. Maybe we can turn off auto realign and click on OK. Nice. Then I'm gonna double click on my UV islands and I'm gonna rotate it to find the perfect alignment. It looks like this way. Then I'm gonna select that straight edge and click on align UV islands. And that's gonna be it. Uh, I'm gonna scale this up to 25%. Okay, I don't see any distortion at all. Maybe just a little bit on on that seam, but it is acceptable. Now let's check out the other ones. For example, this one. This is happening because we didn't select any seam on this shape. As you can see, there is no exit point for this shape. So I'm gonna just select these edges, hold down shift, select these edges, then make sure this island is selected, go back to edge mode and click on UV unwrap. And that's gonna be it. We can rotate this around, then select a straight edge and click on align UV islands. That's it. I will be doing the same things on these polygons as well. Just select seam. Normally, you want to select these seams from the least visible parts of the shape. So in that case, I believe selecting this from here will make more sense. Then click on UV unwrap, rotate this around, and align the UVs. Then here, I'm gonna click on that polygon so that I can see over here, then I'm gonna double click on it. And select a seam. These edges are looking fine. And click on UV unwrap. Rotate this around. And align the UV islands. Oops. And move it aside. Then let's check out this one. What is that? Oh, yeah. This is already looking fine. No distortion at all. Looking perfect. We can move this aside. Then this one is also looking fine. Maybe we can rotate it 90 degrees, uh, sorry, 180 degrees. So basically, you're gonna hit R, rotate the UV island, then hold down Shift and snap it. Nice, these are already looking fine. And this one is looking weird because, yeah, this has no exit point. So if you are able to make a loop selection perfectly, that means that it needs an exit point, a seam, just like uh, on that island. So let's uh, try to select seams. I believe these are looking fine. Then I can select these edges as well. Hold down shift, select these, and click on UV unwrap. I'm going to double click on that island and move it over here. And this one. Mm, I believe we need to mirror the V and U for this one. Yeah. And this one. We're going to need to do the same process V and U. Now, to pack them, it's very easy. Just select them all, go to UV packing. As I told you before, enable equalize item size and preserve orientation because we just rotated some of them and we want to preserve these. All you need to do is click on apply. Perfect. The texture density is looking great. I'm going to go into edge mode, click off to see the seams, and everything is looking great. No distortion at all. I mean, we could do much better about packing these in, but for the moment, these are looking great. Now we can continue working on the other objects. Let's turn off solo mode. And our next object will be this one. This one is looking a little bit challenging, but I assure you, if you select your seams well enough, you are going to get the perfect result. So let's solo this. I'm going to go into polygon mode, select them all, and reset the UVs. Then I'm going to 
going to edge mode and this time I will use a different selection tool and it's called Funk Break Selection. So click on that and this tool will select the sharp edges based on funk angle. In this case 50 or 49 is looking great. By default it comes with 20 or something like that I believe. So you need to play around with this number because you don't want to select these edges in the middle. So it looks like 49 is looking great. Check out the other parts as well. You don't want to select something else. Also, this tool will not give you the best selections most of the time. So you need to finish off the selections by hand after applying this. So I'm going to say select all. It's going to select these edges. Then I will hit E, which will give me the move tool. Then I will hold down shift and I will continue selecting the sharp edges and for example this one hold down shift select these and these and these edges as well then these edges obviously i will hold down shift find the sharpest one in this case that loop i'm gonna hold down shift and i will be selecting these edges Perfect. Now we are good to go. I'm going to click on UV unwrap. Oh, sorry. I believe we need to enable auto realign so it's going to pack them uh, into this square. Oops, sorry. Didn't happen. Okay. Now select them all. We need to pack them. And for example, let's check out these islands. It is not looking right because this is a cylindrical shape and it needs an exit point. In this case, let's check out the shape and it looks like that edge loop is going to be perfect for this. So select that edge, hold down control and shift select the last one. Then click on UV, unwrap and here you go. This is looking absolutely amazing. I'm going to hit N and Q and check the texture. Okay, this is looking amazing. Then let's see the other ones. For example, this one is looking weird. I'm going to double click on it. And as you can see, this is a cylindrical shape which needs an exit point or a cut or a seam. So I'm going to select that edge. This is the least visible part of the shape, I guess. So I'm going to select that and click on UV Unwrap. Before clicking the UV Unwrap tool, make sure that the island is selected and click on UV Unwrap and here you go this is looking amazing now what else what about that one it's looking a little bit distorted we can try to fix that by relaxing it I'm gonna go to relax UV and click on apply but that didn't make it any better I believe so let's try this projections I will go to front view I will hit S to zoom in and I'm going to click on frontal. So this UVs will be projected based on my view. Now these are looking much better. We have some distortions. To fix that, I can try to reuse relax tool. I'm going to click on apply, but we are going to get the same shape. I mean, this is not looking bad and uh, I don't think you are going to have a problem, but I will try to show you the best way. So I want a relaxed section, but at the same time, I want to retrain this perfect circular edge loop. To do that, while these edges are selected, I'm going to hold down Control and click on Edge Mode. Then I'm going to click on Add UV Pins. Then I will go to Relax, Enable Use UV Pins, and click on Apply. That's going to be it. So basically, uh, by adding these pins, I relaxed everything but these selected edges and points so that I still retrain that perfect circular shape. Then we can click on clear UV pins. We can do the same steps on these UV islands, but I don't think we are going to need to do that. I can maybe just relax them. And the other option is 
select a seam and you unwrap this. Then we can click on your rectangular eyes. These might obviously distort it just a little bit. If so, you can enable this option. Then click on. Then you can right click and select your transform tool. Click on that dot. Start scaling, then hold on shift. Scale them like this. Then we can mirror U and V. Okay, that's another way to unwrap this kind of cylindrical shapes. Then the other ones, for example, this one. Yeah, we need to select a seam. Again, that URL doesn't have any exit points, so we need to select a seam. So let's select that edge and click on UV unwrap and see what we are getting. Mm, I believe we are going to need to select another one. UV unwrap, double click on that islands. Let's try to relax them. And it's not going to work in any way. So we can use UV rectangle eyes. Okay. I don't see. A big amount of distortion. I think it is acceptable. I will do the same thing on that island. So I will be applying the same process on the other UVs as well, especially on these ones. Okay, now what about these ones? Well, I will be basically following the same approach. Just double click on an edge to make a seam, then click on UV unwrap. Then I can select that island and click on your rectangular eyes. We are getting some distortion. Also remember that shapes also play an important role on the UVs. I mean, sometimes it's not gonna be possible to project these selected polygons uh, onto a flat surface, so sometimes you may need to keep them as they are, just like this one. By doing so, you are not gonna have any distortions on them. So it's not always possible to perfectly convert these 3D shapes into 2D shapes. By the way, I guess I selected wrong seams for that island. I mean, not wrong, but I could select much better edges than just click on your on wrap. Okay, I am done unwrapping this now. By the way, you can work freely in your 3D view. I mean, you can move them aside wherever you want because we are going to pick them with UV picking tool, which is an automatic tool, so it's not going to take any time. Go to geometric, enable these options, and click on apply. And here you go. Now it's time to check the mesh. And let's zoom in, check every part of the shape. And by the way, we can enable subdivision surface by hitting Q. Click off. Mm, what about this guy? Let me turn off, let me change my shading, hit N and Q, and I'm gonna solo this. And first thing first, let's try automatic UVs. I'm gonna select the pack and hit apply. Oh, sorry. Uh, before hitting apply, I should either deselect everything or select everything. I'm gonna click on apply, 
and um, let me bring back that material. I mean, yeah, not that bad, but I don't think it's gonna work. So I'm gonna try another one, the cubic one. This one is looking better, but we are getting this random seam, so I don't think it's gonna work either. So I will try the last one, angle one. Yeah, we are still getting these random seams, so these are not acceptable, which brings us to manual UV unwrapping. So I'm gonna reset this, go into edge mode, and I'm gonna use funk break selection. Uh, I can't see anything, so I will change my display and in Q. It looks like 49 is doing a good job. I mean, we did select some of them, but overall it's looking fine. I'm gonna click on select all, going to edge mode, Alt down shift and try to select other seams. So I will try to select the sharpest edges. So select this one, hold down control and shift and select the last one. Nice, which means that I need to do the same thing on that side as well. Nice, then I don't think we need these edges because it is getting smoother, I mean rounder as it goes down, so uh, I don't think we need to select a seam. Instead, I'm gonna double click and select these edges. These are looking fine. Then these edges are also looking fine. Now let's check out these edges. Okay, this one okay, but we need to select another one. I guess this is the sharpest one, so I'm gonna hold down Shift and select these. Then these ones, then that edge, hold down shift, select this. Okay, now the other side. Hold down shift, if you see a missing edge, just select it as well. Okay, I believe we selected them all. Now it's time to select a seam for these polygons. As you can see, this is a cylindrical shape which needs an exit. So I'm gonna hold down shift and select these edges. Same here. Okay. I believe we selected all the sharp edges. Now it's time to click on UV unwrap. Before clicking on that, make sure you selected all of these polygons, not a portion of it. So hit Control A, go back to edge mode and click on UV unwrap. And here we go. We get our first error. And actually, I got a lot of comments about this error. And I'm going to show you how to solve this kind of errors. It is about bad or duplicated points or polygons. Just click on OK. It's going to automatically select the bad edges or polygons or points, whatever uh, the problem is. Then you need to hit S on the keyboard, which will zoom in. Then you can try to see what's going on. But before diving deep into, I'm going to hit Ctrl Z because I don't want to lose that selection. So hit Ctrl Z a few times. Then I'm gonna go into points mode and check on these points. And I believe I found my duplicated points. It is really easy to fix. Just grab polygon pen tool, select that point, move it away, then merge this. Same here. Now, if I go back to edge mode and click on UV unwrap, I don't think we are gonna have any other problems. Before doing that though, Make sure you selected all the polygons, go back to edge mode and click on UV and wrap. And here you go. Obviously, we need to pack them, go UV packing and click on apply. And this is looking great. I can move this aside. Looks like we forgot to add this edge to our selection, so I'm gonna click on that edge and only select that. UV Islands, go back to edge mode and click on UV and wrap. 
There you go. I think you can make these uranians more straight. So let me double click on these edges and hold on control, convert these into points, click on add UV pins, then go to relax, make sure you enable use UV pins and click on apply. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Now we can clear the UVs, click on that edge and click on LN UV island. Perfect. I believe everything is looking great. Maybe we can select a seam for these polygons and click on UV unwrap and then we can click on UV rectangle lines. So let's collect these. Just double click and Move all of these over here. Then select these edges as seams. Okay, now I'm gonna double click on these polygons islands while holding down shift. I don't know if it's gonna work on multiple objects or I mean multiple islands, but let's try it. Let's go into edge mode and click on UV and wrap. And yeah, it worked. Now let's see if it's gonna work. If I click on UV rectangle rise, no. So I need to select them one by one and then click on UV rectangle rise. Oops, we forgot this one. Selected edge, selected polygon islands, and UV unwrap, and UV rectangularize. Now I'm going to select them all, Control A, and go to UV picking and click on apply. I'm going to hit N and Q. Obviously, we need to rotate these, I guess, like that or that way. Oops. Rotate it first and hold on Shift. I'm going to hit Q to enable the southern surface. I'm going to check it if you are having any distortion. Maybe just a little bit on these polygons, but as I showed you, you can add these kind of loop cuts to eliminate the distortion as much as possible. Then I believe, yeah, the alignment of these UVs, these are looking Fine, but for example, this one, I believe we need to rotate it like that. I know this is not something that you could enjoy, but you know, I'm trying to show you the best way. If I wasn't recording that, I would probably just leave these as they are because I don't think alignment of these islands is that important but again i'm trying to show you the best way because this is a tutorial so and that island should be mirrored yeah and yeah that's gonna be it maybe these ones should be mirrored as well. That one. Also, I really like that section. It is looking great. Although the shape is changing from angular to circular, we got a perfectly relaxed UVs. Okay, now, yeah, this one is a little distorted as you can see. I want to make this as straight as possible, so I'm gonna double click on that loop and click on UV straighten, then hold on control and click on points, which will convert them into points. Then I'm gonna click on add UV pins. Now, select that UV islands, go to relax UV, 
enable use UV pins and click on apply. There you go. Now I can select them all, I can clear the UV pins and hack them one more time. Perfect. All right, now it's time to unwrap the last object. I will be using all the techniques I have showed you so far. So if you are still here, I highly recommend you to watch this section. So first thing first, let's solo it and reset the UVs. I want to first try the U funk break selection, but I highly suspect that it's going to work because uh, this tool doesn't work well with objects that have I polygon density. So for example, let's say select all and this is what we are going to get. Let's try a lower number like 20. Select all. Yeah, that looks much better, but we are getting these random edges. So I think the most convenient way is going to be selecting the seams by hand. So let's start off with that section. I'm going to hit VNL, loop selection tool, and select that edge loop. Then hold on shift, select this one. Then I will make a loop fill selection. Select these polygons, then I will go to the, let's see, yeah, front view. Then projection and click on frontal. All right, doesn't look that bad, but I am seeing some distortion for that reason i'm going to click on that outer loop just just double click on it then hold down control convert this into points then click on add uv pins now go into polygon mode go to relax uv and it will use uv pins and click on apply so i'm gonna hit ctrl z and do it one more time so you can see it better just look at the, the amount of distortion we are getting right now but after hitting apply you're gonna get none, which is great. I can clear the pins, and as I UV unwrap, I will uh, hide the selected polygons. I believe working with hide polygon and big shapes it really helps if you hide unwrap parts. So for that reason, I'm gonna click on hide selected. So let's try to do the same things on that side. Loop selection, good selection. Then front view, click on projection, frontal, make it a little bit larger to reduce the distortion. I'm going to click on that outer loop, convert these into points, then relax them. Then I can hide this. Now let's try to select these edges. Hold and shift. Oops, not this one, that one. Then hold on shift double click, then select this. By doing so, I should be able to make a full selection because these selected edges uh, acted just like borders. Then select that UV island, then click on UV and wrap. This is already looking good. Maybe we can click on UV rectangular eyes, it's gonna make it even better. I can mirror you, I guess. Yeah. Then we can hide this as well. Then what about this one? I'm gonna double click on these edges. Then make sure you select that islands only. Then while you are in edge mode, click on UV and wrap. Then you can oops, double click on the islands. Rotate them around. Okay, I can move these around and hide them. Then let's double click on these edges. Same here. Then I can double click on that edge loop. Then I can make a full selection, UNF, or we can get it from that. Select menu and I will go to the front view and click on frontal projection. Since this is a perfect flat surface, I mean, if we go to the right view, you can see that this is perfect flat, so it is 
not needed to relax this. I will just need to mirror you. I can hide this. I will go back to edge mode and make another field selection and go to the front view and click on frontal projection. This one is looking great. I'm gonna hide this selection. Then I will make another field selection. Then front view, click on front. Now, as you can see, this is not perfectly flat, so we should get some amount of distortion. So, for that reason, I'm gonna select that outer loop, just double click on it, hold on control, then add UV pins, go to relax UV, make sure these polygons are selected, and click on apply. Perfect. I'm gonna hide these ones, then go back to edge mode. It looks like you lost the selection, but it is easy to get this. Then make a field selection, front view, projection, and I will do the same thing basically. Just double click on, on that outer loop while you are in edge mode. Then convert them into points. Add UV pins and relax these polygons and hide them. So the rest is going to be really easy. We know where the seam should be. Select these edges. Same here. Then make a field selection and click on UV unwrap. Well, that doesn't look very good. Oh, it is because. We didn't clear out the pins, so I'm gonna hit Ctrl Z, click on clear UV pins, and click on UV unwrap. Yes, no, this is looking perfect. We can click on UV rectangularize to make it more straight, and we can hide this. All right, we are going great now. Let's try to unwrap this. Select a seam. Or this cylindrical shape as well. Hold on, shift. Oops, not this one, but that one. Then I will make a field selection. It's gonna only select that portion, that section of the edges of the selected edges. So I should go back to edge mode, then hold on, shift, and select this. Perfect. I will go back to edge mode one more time, then hold on, shift, and select this. Now I could go to edge mode and click on UV and wrap. And here you go. Yeah, since these, these polygons are not perfectly flat, we are gonna need to select a seam for this. So for example, that edge, then click on UV and wrap. Or there is another way. It is the projection method. Go to the front view, click on projection frontal, then double click on that edge, then convert them into points, add your pins and relax them. Yeah. Then these ones, projection. Uh, I will turn off my seams. Okay, UV pins and relax. I'm gonna clear the pins. That part, I believe it is looking already great, no distortion at all, which means I can hide this. Okay, let's continue on wrapping. These polygons, I believe. Yeah, I'm gonna select these as my seams. Then I will make a loops, uh, sorry, field selection, UNF, select these polygons. Then obviously, we are gonna need seams. And um, yeah, these edges will be the least visible ones. Then going to edge mode, 
make sure you select this and click on UV and red. And check the letters and the numbers and the lines. Everything is looking great. You can hide this. And yeah. Let's handle this. Hit selection and click on UV and wrap. I don't think we need any kind of relaxation. Maybe just a little bit. This is a very small area. I can move this around or we can keep it as. Then we can hide this selection. Then I will make another loop selection. Then I'm going to select this. UV and wrap. And here you go. I can align these like that. And maybe relaxation just a little bit. I can straighten this. UV straighten, hold and control, add UV pins and relax them. Okay. Clear UV pins and double click on these items, hide them. Same here. UNF, UV and wrap, relax it and hide it. Then select these polygons, hold down shift, double click on these edges and select these ones as well. Then hit UV and wrap. I can double click on that loop, straighten them, convert them into points and relax them. I can hide these now. Let's see. Yeah, I believe you can double click on that edge loop and make a field selection. You can go to front view and click on auto projection. I believe we may need to select these edges. These are already selected. I will hold on control convert using the points and add these as UV pins. Then I'm gonna relax them. Again, hide them then the other side. Edge mount, select the sharpest edge loop. In this case, this is the edge loop we should select. Then field selection, same front view, and click on frontal projection. I need to mirror you, then convert these into points, add you pins, and relax. I'm gonna move them, move them. I think we can start the work on the bottom part. Just double click on these edges. Then these ones. Mm, why is that selected? I don't know. Just to select them. Then I will select these as well. Then Make a field selection. Oops. Mm, it didn't work. That means that we missed an edge or multiple edges. Yeah, over here. I'm gonna hold my shift, select these. Then I should be able to make a field selection. Perfect. For this one, you could go to the top view and click on front. Obviously, we are going to get some distortion, actually. Not that much, but we should click on relax. And um, I don't think this is something we want. So let's try to double click on these edges and convert them into pins so that um, no, it's not going to work. So maybe we should click on these as well and straighten this out. Then hold on control, add them as pins and hit apply. No. I will do the same thing on these edges, convert them into points, add UV pins and relax them. And here you go. This is looking perfect. I mean, we are getting a little bit distortion on these polygons, but um, I think this is a 
acceptable amount of distortion. So that's okay for me. You can write this selection. Let's see. Hmm. I think we need to change. Yeah, we need to start from here. Then we should go up. Or let me try double clicking. Yeah. Mm. No, actually. Or we could make. Okay, that part is looking a little off. Let's double click on that edge. This part is looking a little bit weird. Uh, I made a mistake probably while modeling this, but okay. Go into another direction. Hey, by the way, I don't know if I showed you, but sometimes pet selection tool might work better than selecting selecting these edges by hand especially if the density is high hold down shift and select these edges oops i made a mistake over here go back and select these instead then i should be able to make it a selection then by the way we don't have to go to the views we can also use the 3d view I'm gonna change my view just like that so I can directly see the selected polygons. Then I'm gonna click on frontal projection. Then we can relax them. And finally, I can select that and align that UV islands. Perfect. Let's hide these. Then the top section, I can double click. On these edges then let's find the sharpest edge which is this one open shift click on edge loop then i could make a selection i could go to the top view and click on frontal projection i'm going to click also on relaxing perfect let's hide these polygons Then I will make a full selection. Since we have a kind of border with these selected edges, I should be able to select these. But uh, sorry, I forgot to add another border by selecting these edges. Hold down shift. Then field selection. We could go to the right view, frontal projection, and that's gonna be it. Like this. Then all right, these are going to be really easy. I will just double click on that polygon island, go into edge mode, and click on UV on red. I'm going to rotate this, then select a straight edge and click on UV align UV island. Perfect. Same here, double click on the polygon island first, then go into edge mode and select these edges as, as a seam and click on UV on red. Rotate this around, then Select that edge and click on UV, align UV islands. Then we can hide them. Oh, sorry. I selected them all. I just need to select the UV islands. Then I'm going to click on hide selected. All right. Now I think it's time to check on these inner parts. And I'm going to start off by selecting a seam. I think this is the sharpest one. Yeah. Then we need to select something for the inside. Nice. Then I can double click on these. This part will not be important because it's not going to be visible, but just in case, I will make a full selection. Then I'm going to use frontal projection and relax this and move them away. And hide it, then go back to edge mode. I believe you need to select these edges as well. 
and these ones opa shift by doing so i should be able to select this portion only and click on uv unwrap i'm going to select that edge click on uv islands and everything is looking great i selection oh sorry should do that in polygon mode then uh, unfortunately i lost my selection so let's try to do that one more time Alt and control i sorry Alt and shift select these edges and these ones as well then i'm gonna hit these edges to my selection Maybe I should have unwrapped this with the last piece to be unwrapped, but anyway, I'm gonna relax this and I these selections go back to edge mode and I can select that island or this UV island. We need to select a seam right around here because I don't think we could unwrap this as a single piece. Because as you can see, these points are going straight, then all of a sudden they start to go down, and it's gonna be really hard to project these on perfectly on a flat surface. But let's try. I'm gonna click on UV unwrap. Then I'm gonna relax it. Yeah, we are getting just a little bit distortion, especially over here. Uh that should be perfectly straight, but I believe. This is an acceptable amount of distortion. If you are not happy with that kind of distortion, like you can um, separate these UE islands into two, then relax them or um, UE unwrap them. Uh, let me select that edge, align the UEs, then this one. Then I'm gonna relax these. Yeah, now as you can see. These are looking more straight. Okay, let's hide them. Also, I see the I see a pin. I'm gonna create the UV pins. Go back to edge mode. And let's see um, what about that part I'm gonna make. Oh sorry, I forgot the other side completely. So I'm gonna hold I shift, select these. Make a field selection, then I will go to the front view and you know what to do frontal projection. Obviously, we are going to have some distortion on this section, especially because again, we are trying to convert this 3D shape into 2D. So you can imagine the process as if we are trying to scale this on the Z. If you do that, you are, gonna no, you are gonna get no distortion. If I go back, you are gonna get this distortion. So in these cases, we need to click on relax UV, and that's all. I'm gonna hide this selection, then I will make another field selection. You can also use UV and wrap. You can rotate this around. And that's it. I'm gonna Hide that selection. Then let me select these edges and make a field selection. I will use projection method for these polygons except these ones because I'm gonna use the front view, but in the front view, these polygons are not visible at all. So I need to select them. Yeah, now let's go to the front view and click on frontal projection. We need to mirror you, and that's gonna be it. No distortion at all, only 
in that section. So let's try to relax this. I'm going to click on Relax UI. Mm, yeah, not bad, but I want to retrain that straight edges, that straight line. So I'm going to double click on this and click on, uh, sorry, hold on control, select, click on points mode, add UV pins and relax them while this UV pins option is enabled. Yeah, now this is looking perfect. Let's alright. And I will try to do the same thing basically. Just double click on that sharp edge loop. Then make a field selection. Oops. UNF. Then select live selection tool. You can hit 9 on the keyboard. Hold on control and select these polygons just like I did on the other side. If I keep this, uh, I don't think I will get a good result with the relaxation. Or you know what? Let's try to do that. I will go to the front view, click on frontal projection, and click on relax. Yeah, as expected, these polygons are the reason that we are getting that result after clicking on relax UV because it cannot find enough space to project these as flat as possible so it kind of breaks the system breaks the uvs so for that reason i will hold on control and get rid of these polygons and i'm gonna move these away and yeah, if I remember correctly, I doubled, I double clicked on these edges, converted them into points, then next them. Yeah, great. Uh, what about these ones? I'm gonna double click. I can go to the right view, click on frontal projection. I'm gonna click on mirror view, and that's it. I can clear these UV pins and hide these polygons. Oops, we forgot this one. I'm gonna quickly unwrap this. Go to right view, frontal projection, and that's it. Hide the selected polygons. All right, now we are getting closer to finish this off completely. I'm going to hold down shift, click on these edges, uh, polygons, then I will go back to edge mode, then hold down shift and select these as well. So that way I could select multiple polygon items. And I'm going to click on UV unwrap. Uh, this one, I need to, oops, sorry, I need to mirror U and V. And in this one, the same. And I'm going to. Like this as usual. I am gonna double click on these edges, then make a field selection. Oops, didn't work. It means that we forgot to include one edge to make a border. I will make a field selection. Let's try UV and wrap. All right. So you don't have to always go to the front view or right view or projections. You could also use the UV and wrap tool. I'm gonna rotate this. Like that, and we V and U, and that's it. I right, the selection. Go back to edge mode, select that edge, make a fill selection, UV and wrap, rotate this, and hide right. the polygons. Now, um, let's see. I'm gonna double click. On these edges, and on these edges as well. Then make a field selection. Go back to edge mode. Select these as well, and click on UV unwrap. Rotate this. Uh, 
okay you should one as well which means that i can hide this go back to edge mode field selection let's try to use uv and rep tool first thing first mm, that doesn't look that good let's try the front view frontal projection and relax obviously we are going to need to select seams i'm going to select this and copy using the points at uv pins and relax them perfect i believe we need to mirror you yeah i'm going to clear the pins and hide the selection go back to edge mode field selection front view frontal projection to select these edges from it using the points and uv pins and relax them clear the uvs and uh, sorry clear the pins and select hide this selection now um, we could select this and hit uv and wrap I want these as straight as possible, so I'm gonna double click on the middle edge loop and click on UV straighten and you know the process. That's good. I'm gonna rotate this just a little bit, then select these edges, straighten them, convert these into points and relax them. There you go. I'm gonna hide this, then Double click, make a selection, click on UV and wrap, rotate this, then select the edge, click on align UV island. Perfect. Hide the selection. Then it's gonna be really easy. Just double click on these edges. Sorry, on that polygon alignment and click on UV and wrap. Okay, looking great. Maybe just a little bit relaxation. I select it, and here we go. The last piece. Double click, UV and wrap, relax it, and rotate it. Now I am gonna click on show all, then select them all. By the way, we have pins, so I'm gonna clear these out. Go to UV packing and click on apply. Perfect. Now let's check out the shape. I think we should combine this UV island and this one. So I'm gonna move them over here, then this here, and select these ones as well, and get a good flat look. Then click on first, click on reset UV, then click on UV and wrap, and then hit S to zoom in. Then we can select the edge and align the UVs. Then I can select them all or I can fit these into over here. Nice. Now let's turn off solo mode. Oh, yeah, we have that trigger. I will use automatic UV packed one. It should work perfectly. If you see distortion, relax these out. Yeah, that usually fixes the problem. All you need to do after that point, rotating these around. Then this one, obviously these need seam or we can go into polygon mode. We can use font break selection. But this time I will be in polygon mode and this is going to make a selection based on the sharp edges. In this case, I will be able to select these polygons and we can use Frontal projection 
Это там такие next step. And I'm going to double click on this one. I guess we need to include this one as well. Or we can solo these. Yeah, I should select these polygons. Make a frontal projection. They are like this. This part is already looking fine. Maybe I can align this. And that's going to be it. If I had to texture this object in Substance Painter, I will have probably uh, packed these objects into a single one, which will make it a lot easier to, you know, bake the textures, etc. It's gonna make it a lot easier and faster. So, for that reason, let me show you how you can do that. Just select them all, right click, and click on Connect Objects and Delete. Obviously, this is gonna make all the UVs overlap, but it is really easy to fix. Just select them all, Ctrl A, go to UV Picking, and click on Apply. Just make sure to preserve orientation and the equalize iron size options are enabled. Then click on Apply. And that's it. All these UVs are packed perfectly. You can also check the mesh itself. You can see the texture density, it is the same all over the place. I am really happy with the results. We could also check the distortion if you are getting any kind of distortion, but I see nearly not. Maybe just a little bit on these polygons and I try to explain why we are getting these just in case uh, you could try to add these loop cuts so that it's going to prevent any kind of distortion. But overall, this is looking perfect. You can export this out and Paint this in Substance Painter, and we can get this back and put this under the subdivision surface, and it's gonna work great. You are gonna get the same look you get in Substance Painter. Alright, everyone, if you are still here, it means that you really want to learn 3D. <laughs> and I hope you learned something new. I tried to show you and explain everything I know about UV unwrapping in Cinema 4D. So I hope you found it useful and learned something new. So if you liked the video, remember to like the video. And uh, if you could share it, I would really appreciate it. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next trades. Bye.